Hello everyone, thank you for so much for tuning in to this session of the Azure Back to School event. My name is Brian Gorman, I have a few Azure certifications and an MCT, and I'm here to bring you this session on developing with digital twins. So when I was working through this and I was trying to figure out what would be a good sample of trying to make this usable or at least understandable, I thought about doing the trucking problem. And of course, in order to make a real problem here, uh, we would need much more in depth than what we're gonna have time to do tonight. Uh, so what I'd like to do is just kind of describe a basic part of the problem and what we're going to attempt to solve tonight. And then you could take this further and see how you could apply this to your own scenarios. So in this solution, what I want is to build a digital twins model that will ultimately model my fleet. If I'm a fleet manager, I likely have, you know, 5, 10, 15 drivers, whatever it might be that I'm managing. And those drivers have to get a truck. That truck has to have a trailer. And all of that together has to go from a shipper to a recipient. That's a trip. That's an actual trip. <laughs> Sorry. It's just too funny. Couldn't resist. So with that, uh, you're going to get your driver, your trailer, your truck all together, and you're going to get it from point A to point B. So ultimately, there'd be routes. There would be you know things like managing the hours of the driver, having to get them to a place where they could rest for the night if it's an overnight trip. You know, refueling with uh, fuel, uh, taking their 15 minute or 30 minute mandatory break, whatever it might be. All of that stuff. So we're going to ignore the real problem because it's just way too intense to solve tonight. What we're going to do is just a simulation of it with just a trip that has a truck driver and a trailer. The driver uh, will have a name and an ID. The truck will have an ID and it'll have a location which we could have a latitude and a longitude to track where that truck's at. We're not going to do that in this, but it will be positioned to do that should you desire to tra take this forward. The trailer itself also has an ID and a location. And then what we're really going to work with is that temperature on that trailer and a temperature alert. And so ultimately, if that trailer gets too warm, we want to know. We need to call our driver and let them know your trailer is throwing an alert. Your ice cream is going to melt or your bacon is going to go bad or whatever you're hauling that's supposed to stay cold is going to not be cold. And so that's really what we're going to do. And what, what we're going to do with that is we'll create the digital twins instance. Then we'll create an IoT hub. We'll simulate a few sensors coming in from our fleet of trucks. We'll have that data ingested into the IoT hub, and then we'll load that data into digital twins using an Azure function. So we'll have to build that out as we go. And then the next step of the puzzle, which we aren't going to get to, is just way too much to go into, is then you could do things like time series events after the fact, once you've got it loaded into your twins, once you've got it loaded into your IoT hub, then actually doing you know postmortems or different time series events across that data. That's the next level. We're not going to get to that in this demo, but you could take it there uh, on your own if you decide to. So what I'll do throughout this is I will be presenting to you some documents that I'm hitting along the way, and these will all show up in a blog post. So you don't have to worry about writing any of these down or anything. I'll have this outlined with links for everything I'm doing. And what the first one we're going to start with is just a getting started with a sample scenario in an Azure Digital Twins Explorer. So this is kind of the backbone of what we're doing, and I'm going to go off the rails quite a bit from some of these things, but you could use this to get started figuring out how to get you know, your digital twin set up, creating resources, etc. everything that you need to do in order to start working with the digital twins at Azure. So the first thing I'm going to do then is go ahead and create a new instance of Azure Digital Twins. So uh, within this, I have my resource group that I want to go ahead and put it into. The name of my instance for an Azure Digital Twin here is going to be my Fleet Manager. And then I'm going to go Digital Twin. I don't know. We can call it Azure Digital Twin. How about that? Fleet Manager ADT. I'm just going to do everything in the East US. It's somewhat close to me and um, generally a primary region, so we're going to keep that. This is probably the most important piece right here. Make sure not to forget to assign yourself the data owner role. If you do, it just adds a lot of problems to your solution when you're trying to work with the data and you can't, even if you're an owner on the subscription. So please make sure to check that if you want to uh, ease your work a little bit. The networking is great. You could have a private endpoint on this if you want. I'm just going to do a public endpoint. I'm not going to lock anything down here and I'm going to delete it after this anyway. 
And then the system manage identity, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. I actually don't need that for this demonstration, but I'm gonna turn it on anyway, in case I was going to do something down the road later with this digital twin to connect or authenticate an Active Directory against some other service, uh, I would want to have that on. I don't need any tags. I'm just gonna go ahead and review and create this. And so this will go ahead and start deploying my Fleet Manager Azure Digital Twins. And so as the next step then, while that's deploying, what I wanna do is actually start working with the Digital Twins model. And so I have my stubbed out code here for my driver interface, trailer uh, device and interface, trip interface and truck interface. I also have um, an Excel spreadsheet, which I'll show you for bulk loading later, some JSON for bulk loading. This is the Azure function for the ingester, and this is the truck simulator that's gonna send data to IoT Hub. Now, all of this is available in my repository. So my repository is the AB2S Digital Twins demo, and it's a public repository, so you can go out there and grab this. Uh, it just has all of this stuff in it. You see that it has the bulk loads, it has the fleet models. Uh, they're completed at this kit in this uh, repository, of course. It has the function app ingester, and it has the trailer simulator that you're going to need. And so all that stuff is out there, so you don't have to write the code. You can grab that and tweak it as necessary for your instances. All right, so what we're going to do next is we're going to actually just write this code very quickly, and we can touch base on how this all works as we go. So we'll start with the driver interface. I, of course, already have this done to save time. Uh, otherwise, this would be a, a massive undertaking of time to try to walk you through this line by line. So what I want to do here is just give you a quick overview of how this is all working. So what you see here is you have DTMI, DTDL, context two. So what is all that? Well, the DTMI stands for the Digital Twin Model Identifier. And so that is a specification. Again, there's a repo for this and I'll have all these links, so don't worry about not catching it right now. But you see the whole entire syntax and it goes into way more detail than we're gonna to go tonight. But ultimately you see there's a validation with regular expressions. You can do validation with C. Um, there's some different things here as well uh, for compatibility on URI and such. So there's a lot of information about the digital twin model identifier here that's important. Additionally, the DTDL is the data digital twin definition language. And so that's used for models. Um, and then it has specifics around that. And so ultimately some elements of that model, which are property, telemetry, relationship, and component. So we can have all of those, some of them, none of them, one of them at least probably, um, either telemetry or properties and relationships to get the models related to each other and components allow us to do a few other things if you want. So um, that's out there. So the DTMI and the DTDL is just identifying this context and then the context in version two. And so that's what's gonna be for everything here. Um, and that's just what it is. So then we do our own version, DTMI. And here we see COM WCD trucking. So that's the reverse DNS. Um, we're for We Crash Daily Trucking, which is our company. And yes, and so that was attempting to be funny, and I don't know if that's really funny or not. Anyway, so this is our, our reverse DNS for COM and WCD trucking, and then the digital trip, which is going to be kind of our uniform uh, assignment indicator for all the models. This is specifically a trip truck driver, and the driver has uh, a version here of one. You see it's a driver interface model and it has a property for a truck driver ID, which is an ID string, and a property for a name, which is a truck driver name, which is a string. So then I have the trailer device. Uh, let's skip that for now, let's come back to that. Let's go ahead and do the trailer interface. And so let me just grab the code for that. There's my trailer interface. Again, we have our reverse DNS lookup. This is the trip trailer version one. It's a trailer, it's the same context, and then it has a property which is an ID string as well. It has a property which is a custom schema for trailer location, which has a latitude and longitude, which again, we're not using, but it's there if you wanna play around with it. And then you see it also has a relationship. So the trailer can have devices. And so it's a one-to-many relationship, so generally it's pluralized. But we have, you know, you could say rel has device if you wanted, because really we're going to do one-to-one -one here. 
but we can have multiple devices, so it is, that, it is what it is. The ID here of this relationship and the version number, and then what's most important is the target. This is gonna be a trailer device that we're gonna target on version one. And so that's gonna be this trailer device. And so when we drop this trailer device in, it's also going to have the context. It's gonna have its own ID, but you note that this ID right here is gonna map directly to this down here for the target. And that's how we know the relationship target has to be a trailer having a trailer device. And then we have the property for the device ID. We have a property for temperature. And then we have a property for a temp alert, which is a Boolean. And so what I want to do is at one point I was working with this. Instead of a property, I was going to try to do telemetry. And instead of having the, you know, the schema of double, I had, um, you know, some other stuff there. And then I had, actually, I think I had that, but then I had unit uh, Fahrenheit or something here. Degree Fahrenheit. Can't spell. Something like that. Uh, anyway, I want to put this back in just to, to make this wrong uh, for a minute. It's going gonna, it's gonna to ultimately be, I'm sorry if I'm spelling Fahrenheit wrong. Um, is it H-E-I-G-T? I don't know. I don't know how you spell Fahrenheit. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Wasting time. Let's stop that. Okay, so anyway, it doesn't matter. It's wrong no matter what I do, even if that was spelled correctly. Uh, but I want to put that in there on purpose just to show you um, some stuff later. All right, so we have the trailer interface here, uh, the trailer device and the driver interface. We need a trip and a truck. So the truck is gonna be the first part of that and that truck is gonna have a driver. And so the truck itself, again, has that same context. This is a truck, version one. It has a property for ID. It has a truck location. Again, we're not really mapping that, but you could if you wanted to. It has a maintenance alert. So maybe the truck needs to get worked on. Again, we're not gonna work with that in our solution, but we wanna make sure it's there if we wanted to use it. And then it also has a relationship. Again, this is mapping to a driver. So at this point, we have a trailer, which has a trailer device, a truck, which has a driver. And now we just need a trip that maps with two trucks. Uh, excuse me, a trip that maps with a truck and a trailer. And by default, from the truck and the trailer, then it will have the driver and the trailer device. So the trip interface itself here is going to have the same kind of a setup here. Um, that's the wrong... So when I copied it, didn't copy and paste correctly. So here's our trip. So there's our trip interface and it has a property for the trip ID. It has a relationship to trucks and a relationship to trailers. And again, these have to map directly to the DTMI target um, ID for the object. So again, if we're trying to track a trailer here, that would have to map to the trailers um, ID here. And so it does, of course. All right, so that's our models, and that's all we need in order to complete what we want to complete tonight. That gives us our models that we can use in our actual Digital Twins Explorer. So the next piece of this puzzle is validating these models. So in order to validate the models, we need to go and get the DTDL validator. And so um, that's going to be another GitHub repo. It ultimately has um, some information here about how to use it, but we really care about the directory that we want to search. That's ultimately how we're going to find out if our stuff is valid. You could download this code. Um, you can get the sample. And again, here it's going to highlight. You can use an extension if you want. The directory to search default is a dot. And so once you have this downloaded and ready to go, you can then point it at a directory and make it work. So in my solution here, I've already downloaded that. And so here I have the, the DTDL validator. And in there, this is going to have my CS proj, um, the bin interactive, and such. So I should be able to run this here if I just do .NET build real quickly to make sure it works. So we see that it does work. Everything's working the way we would expect it to. And so the next thing I need to do is try to validate. So I can see how this works by saying .NET dash dash, oh, excuse me, .NET run dash 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 help. And that will give me my commands again here. And what I want to do is this dash dash directory. Uh, and again, the default is a, as a dot, but I need my directory for my fleet models. So what I'm going to do is um, validation directory or validation path 
is equal to, and again, we're in PowerShell here, so we're using that dollar sign there. Um, if you were running in Bash, you wouldn't need it. And my path for this is going to be this, this is where they're stored locally. And so that's my validation path. So I just want to do .NET run dash dash directory and then the dollar sign validation path. And this should validate. And we see that we have an error, which we kind of expected because there's no such property as unit on my uh, trailer device. So I added that to make an error on purpose. So let's take that out. And then let's break something else just to show if we have the wrong context here. And we validate. We're going to again get another error. Uh, this is for the wrong version. So it tells us to fix that. So it's really great to be able to validate our models ahead of time and make sure that everything's set up correctly and that at least the DTDL is valid. And if not, you know, we can try to correct it before we spend any more time trying to deploy this into a real world solution. So now that the validation is done, we're ready to start actually modeling this in our digital twins. There are two ways we can do this. We can do it locally on our own device, or we can do it at Azure. And so just to make sure we have gotten our deployment at this point completed, let me double check that. And it is out there. So we do have our fleet manager, uh, Azure Digital Twins out there. It does have a fully qualified domain name that we'll be needing eventually some other information about this, uh, which we will come back to this in a little bit. But first, I wanna show you how to do this locally. So we need to get the, um, the Digital Twins Explorer, get that locally. And so that uh, Azure Digital Twins Explorer is uh, some code. And then if you'll note right here, there's actually a link to browse code here, but there's also um, some, some instructions, if I believe, if I remember this, to run it locally. Um, run it as a Docker application um, and get this stuff working um, locally, however you want to make this work uh, to get it running. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to run this locally on my machine. I've already downloaded the code. And the code is, again, uh, going to be easily accessed through PowerShell or through Bash, however you prefer. Uh, so let's just back out of this and we are going to be in the ADT Explorer. And in here you see there's a number of folders. The main one that I'm going to do this directly in my client here, so I'm not going to spin up the Docker file, but you could if you prefer to do containers. I'm going to drill into client, and then I'm going to drill into source. And there we have all of our app.js and everything, so I'm just going to do npm install at this level, which will bring in, of course, all the npm libraries. Now that's going to take a little bit of time, so I'm not going to make you sit here and watch that. And so I'm going to pause the video while this is happening, and I'll be back once the NPM libraries are all installed. All right, so our in packages are installed. And so now what I need to do, of course, you would want to first make sure you're connected to your Azure account. So you'd run something like AZ login, connect to your account. I've done that ahead of time, so you don't have to watch me do that. And I don't end up showing you things about my subscription I don't really want you to know anyway. Uh, just trust that I've already logged into Azure. And because of that, I can actually get my digital twins. So this is a quick query to list out the different hosts that I have as digital twins on my account. And uh, so I have a default resource group that I set during a dry run. Uh, unfortunately, I forgot that, that I did that and I'm not setting that here. So let's add in the resource group here. And that is going to be, I need to grab my resource group from my instance. Just give me one second. That's going to be the uh, AB2S Digital Twins resource group. So let's just drop that there. And now it'll go to the right resource group. And there we go. So all that really did was got me the public facing URL, which I could have gotten simply by looking at the instance uh, in the overview. So right here, the same thing. Uh, is available. So I could set that as my public facing URL or whatever. I don't actually need that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this now. So npm run start. And what this is going to do is bring up local host 3000 and it will actually connect me 
to my Azure Digital Twins via that URL. So I'm gonna need that. So I'm just gonna actually grab that from here this time. And when we get the instance up here, it does take a moment the first time to load these up. Uh, while it's doing that, let's go ahead and open it in the actual portal as well. Um, sometimes it speeds things up if you open it in both. Sometimes this will give me a bunch of authentication errors. So luckily so far we seem to be okay. I'm not getting any authentication errors here. And now let's just go ahead and get this open locally. All right. So now I, I did get an authentication locally. Please make sure you're logged into Azure on your host machine uh, by running AZ login. So something went wonky there. Um, I actually am logged in, uh, but what it for whatever reason, it didn't let me do that. So let's go ahead and drop my new one in here. This is Fleet Manager ADT, and let's go ahead and save that and see if we can't just upload a model here. So this is again local, and so what I wanna do is go back to this instance, and let's just do the driver interface. And we'll see if we get an authentication error. We didn't, um, and then I can actually create a twin here, so we'll just call it driver 001, we don't care. And the cool thing is, is I'm doing this locally on my local host. If I go out to my portal, I should see those changes here. There you see driver one coming in. Uh, for whatever reason, I'm not seeing the model. So let's refresh, there it is. So even though I did it locally, it's again using the same instance, so we're good. So when I do a digital twin here, I can actually set information here. So there's my driver ID. Let's make this driver name John Smith or something and save that, so that will patch it. You'll see the little patch information, and that makes sure that that driver information has been updated in my Digital Twins instance. So that gives me some really good ways to do that. Uh, what I wanna do is also show I can upload models here in the portal. So I'll bring the other ones in, and let's add in a trailer. You see that I've you know done this a few times, so I have a few things remaining, which is kind of awesome. It saves a little bit of time. And then I need a trip, and the trip is whatever number, it doesn't matter, and a truck. So I have all five of my models in play here. And again, if I go back to my local and I just hit refresh here somewhere, just hit this run query, you'd see all of my stuff pop in there. So it's, it's just as if I'm working locally or in the web. It's pulling the information from the same place, ultimately. Yeah, I would need to figure out how to refresh my, my models here for whatever reason it's not. It's not, it's not pulling those in and I don't see a refresh button here. So that's interesting, uh, but whatever, uh, we got it here. That's all we need. So I just wanna show you how to quickly make a, a, a relationship. So I have a truck that has a driver. I have a trailer that has a trailer device. And these are gonna keep moving around on me. It's a little bit annoying. And a trip which has a truck and a trailer. So ultimately this is kind of what we're going for. So I'm gonna select the truck and the driver. I'm gonna right click and say add relationship. The relationship uh, is the rel has drivers, which we defined in our model. And so now the truck and driver are related to each other. If I start with the trailer device and try to go back to a trip or to the trailer itself, I'm going in the wrong direction. So if I say add relationships, it won't be able to find one. And so there's nothing I can do. So I, you have to make sure to go in the right direction. The trailer has trailer devices. So we're gonna go ahead and add that relationship. And then ultimately the trip has a truck and the trip has a trailer. So there we go. We have our relationship for the trip with a trailer and a truck and the trailer device and the driver are shown here as well. And so we have that ability to see our model. So obviously this is just one trip for one truck and trailer and driver and device. In our real fleet model, we would have hundreds of these. Maybe if I have 10 drivers, I would have 10 different trips going on and I would want to be able to see all of those, especially if my main concern is just to see immediately if one of my drivers has a trailer that's throwing a temperature alert. So we need to be able to do that very quickly and obviously we don't wanna just keep adding and adding and adding and adding and ending up you know, taking a long time. So we can easily do bulk imports. So hitting this delete up here is actually gonna delete everything from my model. So this is a destructive action, so you need to be careful if you do that, uh, but it takes all of them out of there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import a graph. And so the first one that I'm gonna do is actually a spreadsheet. Now this spreadsheet is 
specifically formatted with the DTMI relationship model IDs over here, the ID for specific instances. So you would fill this in with data from your database or whatever. You would build the relationships correctly. So this truck is on trip one, two, three, four. This truck is on trip, you know, two, three, four, five, whatever. So those are related. You have to tell the relationship name and you can put JSON here to actually initialize those models with some data. So you could pull this from your database, export it to a CSV or Excel, uh, and then you could upload this directly into your, uh, into your relationship here. So once I do this, you'll see that, that it pulls that in. It brings in my two trips. And if I look deeper into the details of this, oops, I have to save it first in order to complete the import. Just has to get it all set up here on my twin graph. Refresh by running a new query. It's gonna pull those in. Now I can see, you know, my data was brought in. Um, this one actually has an ID, but it doesn't have any location. The device itself is not in a temperature alert. It's cool enough. Uh, this one is in a temperature alert and we're just pretending it's, you know, that's too warm or whatever. So you can see that that data was brought in. That's one way you can bring the data in. The other way you can bring the data in is through the actual JSON. So if I want, I can export this to a JSON file. And I hit download here, it will download a JSON file that contains exactly that data. And then I could easily re-upload that at some point. Uh, but I've also pre-populated the JSON that I want to bring in. And so let's go ahead and go back to our twin graph here. And we are going to do a new import. And we're going to bring in the fleet bulk load JSON. And this is going to have three separate trips in it. Uh, these are well named uh, so that I can easily work with these you know, for the rest of this demo and be able to you know, show this stuff to you. So I'm going to go ahead and save that and be able to have that in place. We brought five models, 15 twins, 12 relationships. All of that's in place. So there is a, a query data URL that I want to give you quickly, which is this URL. So again, this is all going to be on my local you know blog post so but this gives you more information about how to actually query against your digital twins you can see this is how they're looking for the name giving you the different things you can do there but this isn't it's super intense but there's enough here uh, to get you started and you could go from there on your own but what we saw here is we're just doing select star from digital twins but what if i did a select star from digital twins where it's a model of type driver and so here we have is of, of model driver, and I run that query, you see that's gonna pull in my drivers. So I could quickly look at all my driver information. Or if I wanna be more specific, what we're doing with this, I'm gonna add in, instead of being a driver here, we're gonna do the trip trailer, and then trailer device, and then the semicolon version one. That's the model and temperature alert is equal to true. So now if I run this query, we should see any devices that are currently throwing a temperature alert. So this would be a really quick way for my fleet manager to say, okay, this trailer, and then track it back ultimately, uh, find that trailer, find the driver. You could you know, tweak your query more to make it more useful. But you see that you can query this, and we can actually save this query. So I'm gonna save this query as a temp alert so that later uh, I can use this. So, hey, look, the query already exists. Uh, let's ex overwrite the existing one, that's fine. So there's my temp alert. And uh, if I wanna go back to my just default here, uh, we can go ahead and save this as well, just as my default, so that I can always easily come back to my default view or hit that, and then I don't have to keep typing the queries over and over again. All right, so that gets us set up for starting to get to the point where we need to start ingesting data. Our digital twins are now ready to go. They're ready to take data. Nothing is live yet. So the next thing we need to do is start making devices in our IoT Hub. All right, I know I said that the next thing we were gonna do is create the IoT Hub, but I wanted to show you one other thing I forgot to show you already, and that is I can actually add digital twins through the Azure CLI. Uh, which is an interesting thing. So if you wanted to do this, you could do this yourself as well. Uh, I'm gonna switch over to bash here so that I can easily work with my commands. 
But ultimately, uh, what I want to do is just quickly bring in the name of my my instance here, which is going to be the Fleet Manager ADT right there, and then the model trip is going to be mapped to the same syntax that we had on the trip here. So if I go back to my trip interface, I'm just going to grab this and drop this into my code here. And then I want to do as well the model ID. And we'll do that as a trip 0010 for whatever reason. All right, so now all I need to do to create my digital twin is to drop that information into my query here. So there's my digital twin on my digital twin name, which is going to be Fleet Manager ADT. The DTMI is the model trip. The twin ID is that model ID. The properties, I'm going to add a trip ID of 9999. So we'll see if we can run this correctly. And it says, oh, it requires the IoT extension. So I don't have that installed on this. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, that's going to take a minute. And then we'll find out if I actually have an error in my query to create that trip. And it's back. And so it did work. And so if I go back to my Digital Twins Explorer and just do a quick refresh here, we should see another trip here. It doesn't have anything else on it. There it is. It had the ID 9999. So we can easily do these through the CLI as well. So let's go ahead and delete this twin. I don't actually want it. I just wanted to show that to you. All right, so we are now ready to create an IoT hub. Let's go ahead and do that. Our IoT hub is just gonna be a, you know, the basic hub that we can run for free. We'll do this, our fleet manager hub. Again, I'm just gonna to deploy to East US. You would deploy it where it makes sense. You can do public private networking. When we do the tier here, I'm gonna select free, which is gonna limit a few things, which is fine. I'm going to leave the, everything else pretty much alone. I'm going to go ahead and check this, even though I don't need it. Um, I'm going to leave the minimum TLS to 1.0, even though probably 1.2 is better. And I'm just going to leave two partitions. I don't need more than that. Tags are fine. And let's go ahead and create this free IoT hub. So this will take a minute to deploy an IoT hub. So while it's doing that, let's talk about how we can actually interact with that. First of all, we can do it in the portal, which is probably the preferred way. You can also, of course, use any of the CLI tools or Azure PowerShell. But there's actually another tool called the IoT Explorer, which is a cool little tool that you can download. And so let me grab you that link while we're waiting for this stuff. So the IoT Explorer is another download. And again, all of this will be on the blog, so don't worry about trying to copy down the links or anything at this point. You get the, the releases from the code. Uh, download the latest release and get it installed. And then once you have it, you can actually just go ahead and say, you know, IoT Explorer in your, uh, start it on your, in your local box, and then you would bring in your hub name eventually. So uh, we need to add a connection. So I don't even have to be logged in. I just need the connection string. So you're going to get to see my connection string here. I'm not super worried about it because I'll have this deleted before you see the video. So I'm gonna to go to my IoT Hub owner, I'm gonna grab my primary connection string uh, for that, and then I'll go back to my IoT Explorer. I'm gonna add a connection, I'm gonna drop this in, and you see that there it is, and save that. And now I'm in my device locally. I can actually create a new device, and so this is where it gets really kind of hairy. So I need to make sure that I line up my device ID identically to what I put in my digital twins. So ordinarily you'd probably in, you know, get all your devices connected to the hub and then you make sure your twins map. But since I did these first, I have to make sure everything maps the way I expect it to. So my ID here is trailer sensor. And then what I just did to make it easy was the numbers one, two, and three, six of them followed by the number zero, one. So that way I don't have to think about it. And I put the DTID and the ID exactly the same, so I wouldn't have any conflict or issue with accidentally maybe not associating the right one. But once I do that, uh, this is going to create a device. I'm just using symmetric key, so no certificate attestation. You could do that if you want to. Auto-generating the keys, connecting it directly to the hub. Uh, and again, this is just going to be my trailer sensor. And if I go back to my fleet manager hub here now and look at my IoT devices, of course we should see trailer sensor one. Same thing as if I had gone here and done this with trailer sensor two 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 two, and done the same thing here. 
And of course we have the third device, which is gonna be 333333. So we'll just do that quickly here. Again, we could do this on the Explorer as well. And let's go ahead and do that. So now I have all three of my trailers out there in the world. So I have three trips going, I have three drivers, three trailers, um, three trucks, and three trailer sensors. And the only thing I'm mapping right now is that trailer sensor. And so that's gonna be allowing me to get my data into the IoT Hub from the trailers by using a simulator. So the next step is to update the code and make sure that we create our three simulators. All right, so we're gonna continue on by updating the sensors. And so what I wanna do is uh, make the simulators for these sensors. So here in my code that's also, again, from the repo, I want to go to the simulator and we're gonna open up the Azure IoT Hub. And so this code is prefabbed and it's, it's not good. So please don't judge me um, by this code. Um, actually, most of it's not mine. The stuff that's not mine is good, but I made some junk in here trying to throw temperature over 37 degrees to make it throw an alert. So uh, ultimately that's how it's going to start sending back different data for us to ingest. And so I didn't write this code. Again, this is all gonna be available to you, but there are a couple of samples out there that you can grab very quickly and use. Um, one of them is gonna be here. This one, quick start, send telemetry from an IoT plug and play device to an Azure IoT hub. And so ultimately there's some code here that you wanna grab from the IoT samples for csharp.net. So that's out here as well. And in there you have some simulators and eventually one of them is uh, a simulator to uh, send some temperature data. And that's where I found it. And I just modified it for our purposes for this. So what I need most importantly is my hub name, my shared access key, and then each of the shared access keys for my three sensors that I prefabbed here. And so let's go ahead and grab that information. So my hub name is the fleet manager hub. And my shared access key I actually have here. If I look at, I can actually get everything from here, really. If I go here, I have my shared access key. I can grab this. Again, I don't care that you saw it. It's gonna go away before you ever watch this video anyway. So no worries there. And within there, I need the shared access key for my three devices. So I could actually go uh, into my devices on this hub as well and grab their shared access keys and I can use the primary or the secondary, it doesn't matter. But just so you see this again, so that's getting them from the device, which this is actually really nice. That's a little easier than trying to find them here. But if I go into each of these devices, so we've already done one, let's go to two. Uh, again, it's just right here. So here's my primary key for device two. And then I gotta go back to my code here. And I'm just gonna use the Explorer. It's just a little easier to flip back and forth between them. I'm gonna hit device three here and grab that key. Now, I currently believe that my code is complete and that should create the connection string. So we could have, we didn't really need to compose this. We could have just grabbed the device connection strings and thrown them here. Um, but I've gone ahead and composed all of those from those pieces of information. And then ultimately, we're gonna send a device name of device one name, which is gonna be this name. And then we're gonna send the connection string right now is just the default device connection string one. So we'll ultimately make two copies of this to simulate the other two. But what I wanna do before I do anything else is make sure the code works and that it's doing what I expect it to. So in here, I wanna go ahead and CD into my simulator and then into my trailer simulator. And here I want to go into my device simulator. And there's my CS proj. So I should be able to do the .NET run from here. So let's just do .NET build first to make sure I don't have any code errors. And .NET run. And so we should see some telemetry start coming in here. And we didn't because I have an error. The input is not a valid base64 string and a legal character and padding characters. So I copied and pasted something wrong, apparently. That's a new one. I haven't seen that before. It is sending the data. So I'm not sure what happened there. 
it's very strange, but it's sending events now. So let's take a look at our hub and uh, make sure it's, it's getting some data into it. So I am seeing some messages coming in. So I'm not sure what was going on with the code there, but it does seem to work and I expected it to work. So I don't know why we got that base 64 string, uh, but that's great. Wow, it's working. So let's go ahead and uh, stop this for now. And what we're gonna do to kind of make this, you know, more interesting, we could create two copies of the simulator very quickly. So we just go out to the folder, uh, drag and drop basically that simulator and rename it to simulator two and do it again and rename this one to simulator three and then in each of those we would then just go in quickly and turn on the right version so instead of device connection string one here we'll do two so i really didn't even need this and then device one name becomes device two name and in simulator three, let's do the same thing here. We're gonna turn on connection string three and device three name. So now when I wanna go, I can create all three of these simulators uh, and get them running all at once to send a lot, lot more data in it all at the same time. So that completes our simulator and ingestion into the IoT hub. So the next piece of the puzzle, and I know this is getting very deep and uh, there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of moving pieces, but it's really cool when it all comes together. So the next thing we need to do is build our Azure function to ingest the data and get that out there at Azure and then wire that up to start responding to the events through the event grid and then ultimately pushing the data from that function but after it responds to the telemetry being ingested and pushing it into the data twins instance to complete the activity. All right, for this next piece of the puzzle, we're going to go ahead and create the Azure function app. So we we'll go back out to the portal here and we're gonna create a new Azure function app. And you know we could have probably just published this from Visual Studio Code or from Visual Studio even. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do it this way just because make it easier. So we'll call this our fleet manager ingester. And ultimately we're gonna just use .NET 3.1 in the East US. And the hosting is gonna be consumption on a storage account and Windows. The networking is gonna be left alone here for this plan. Monitoring, we'll go ahead and do the default, you know, application insights that are built along with it. And so we're good to go. Let's go ahead and create the function app. So I'm gonna be using the code from this place right here. And so what you see here is this function is going to be an event grid trigger. So we'll make this just a little bigger. And we're going to send in a response to that event grid. We're going to do a few things. I've tweaked the code just a little bit here uh, to do more stuff with our temperature. Uh, and then ultimately that's going to be going out. So we'll basically be following this document. And I'll have the link again in the, uh, in the blog post. So you can find it there. But ultimately, uh, this is what we're building out. Uh, we have the twins already there, and we are going to create a function to respond to it. We're gonna then make sure that we have a couple of pieces of the puzzle. We need to make sure we have an identity and that we have it set up as the data owner on the digital twins in order to write to it, and a couple of other things that we're gonna do then to wire up some events. So there's a lot of pieces coming yet, but once we get it out there, it's gonna be pretty cool. So here's our fleet manager and jester. So before I forget and don't do this, I'm gonna go ahead and give this an identity right now. So I can just search for identity and I'm gonna turn that on and save it, which gives it of course a system managed identity so it can authenticate in the active directory, which allows it to then have assignments. So you can do this in two places. You can do it here, which is what the document suggests, which is just fine. You could actually go to the digital twins itself um, and look at the instance of the digital twins uh, in the portal and add roles on that instance as well. So I'm just gonna do it here as the document suggests and 
in here, we're going to add a role assignment. The scope is going to be here on the resource group and the digital twins resource group. The role is going to be the Azure Digital Twins data owner. So this is so critical. If you forget to do this step, when you start ingesting your data, everything will work until you get to the Azure function and the Azure function will start trying to write the data and it'll get a 403. And it's a cryptic error. It's not easy to determine what's happening. But if that's what happened, if you're getting a 403 and you're seeing data coming into your Azure function logs and it's not making it to the digital twins, the first thing you should double check is to make sure you gave yourself an identity on the function app and that you have the data owner role assigned to it. And so it kind of talks about that here as well. I believe it even says something around the 403 um, somewhere in here about, uh, about all of that. So if you don't do it right, you'll get an error uh, and that's a big problem. So uh, it takes a while for some, sometimes for these to work. So let's just look at one other thing. So I told you there's two ways to do that. I wanna make sure you see them both. So whichever way you prefer is fine. If you go out to the fleet manager ADT itself, on the access control, the role assignments here. Now we see that our ingester is here already. If it wasn't there, we could have simply added the role assignment from here, selecting that same role as the Azure Data Twins data owner and assigning you know, whoever we need to be the data owner, which was the fleet manager ingester here. Now you can even do further, you know, it knows to find the function app this way if you do your access directly to the function app. But if we use the service principle or whatever, we can get any of them. So just a, a couple of little caveats there, just different ways to get to the same thing. Hopefully by now or some point, we'll come back in here. If we came back in here, we would see our role actually show up. We saw it on the other side, so we know it's there. We know we have identity. And it's going to have some time to think about that while we finish our code. So we have the, the identity. We have the data owner role. Another thing we need on the fleet manager itself is going to be a configuration setting for the actual ADT endpoint. And so once again, I'm gonna create a new application setting here as an environment variable, and it's gonna be the ADT service URL. See, since I've already done this in practice, it, it knows what, it, what I needed, which saves us a little time now, but that's what you're gonna put there. And then the value is nothing more than your endpoint for your fleet manager ADT with the HTTPS on it, of course. So HTTPS, drop that in there. It's not a deployment slot setting, so we'll go ahead and save that. Oh, and we'll double save it because of course we have to double save any kind of our application settings. So that's gonna reboot the uh, Azure function probably, which is great. Uh, and we don't have any functions yet anyway, because we have to build them. So we have the Azure function app created. We added a managed identity. We added the data owner role for the ADT instance. We added the ADT service URL with the link. So now all we need to do is create the, the code and publish it. Well, I already have the code done. And so if we look at the ingester here, what we can see is the data ingester project. Um, it has the data twins function. So again, the links are here in the code as well so that you can have those uh, in a couple places. But here you see it's just that event grid trigger. So it's gonna respond to an event grid event. It's gonna go ahead and authenticate against the digital twins instance. Again, needs to have that managed ID in order to do this. Once it has that, it's going to use that service connection. And if we look for you know, ADT underscore, yeah, there it is. So here's our ADT instance URL, which is that environment variable. So you could have hard coded it here. It would have worked the same. Uh, this was how they set it up on the document. This seems to make sense to use it as a variable can then easily change it out and use this on different functions, uh, any of your ADTs, right? The only thing is down here is again that difference of information. So here I have a temperature property and a temperature alert property on the digital twin for the trailer. So again, those are just the properties and they have to map exactly. So we have uh, on the trailer device, excuse me, the temperature and the temperature alert. And if those don't map exactly, it's gonna error out it's gonna give us a problem. So we need to make sure that that is something it will find. It should, we shouldn't see any errors. It should then log it and then we should do this JSON patch document against the digital twins 
updating, replacing with the values that it's pulling in from this telemetry. And then it does this update digital twin call. So that should push the live data into digital twins. We have that then in place. So our function code is actually correct at this point. There's nothing else to do with it. Um, so we can actually just publish this directly into uh, our Azure instance. And so we could do that through Visual Studio Code, or we can do it the old fashioned way, which is to right click and publish from Visual Studio, which is what I'm gonna do. because That's why I know I can do it really correctly and, and right. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and open the Visual Studio here. And I'll create the publish profile and all that jazz from here. So here's my data ingester. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna say publish. So I have a deployed uh, publisher already there. So I'm just gonna create a new profile. Azure connection, Azure function app on my subscription here and the resource group and everything I want. There's my fleet manager and jester. I'm going to go ahead and publish this out. So that creates the profile, of course. Now I actually push the publish button to publish it. And this will push the functions out into Azure. So the Function app has completed publishing. It's just waiting for the function to be ready again. So we're gonna be good to go there. That's gonna get our Azure Function app in place with all the configuration and authorization that it should need. So the last piece of the puzzle is connecting the events from the ingestion into the IoT Hub to this Azure function as it's responding to the events. Uh, once again, we need to connect the function to the IoT Hub. So we're gonna go to the IoT Hub itself and we're going to go to the events and create that subscription. Of course, in order for this to work, you do have to have Event Grid registered on your subscription. If you don't, the, the connection will fail uh, and you may not even know and why it doesn't work until you try to run it and it doesn't work. So on the IoT Hub itself, on the events, we're gonna create an event subscription. We're going to go ahead and name this Fleet Data Ingester. And it's going to be an event grid schema against the Fleet Manager Hub. The system topic name is going to be Trailer Device Alerts or something. Doesn't really matter. Just needs to make sense for you. And then we're going to turn off all the device created and deleted and connected and disconnected events. We're not responding to those. All we care about is telemetry in this instance. And the endpoint type is going to be the Azure function. And we're gonna go ahead and select one and it's gonna be smart enough to know you only have one on your subscription. So this must be what you're trying to do. And it connects the dots for me, which is nice. If we had more than one, we could obviously go and find those different pieces of the puzzle here, uh, but it knows that's all we have. So it's gonna go ahead and let me do that. And I'm gonna go ahead and create that. So at this point, we've created the IoT Hub, registered the three trailers to it. We have sensors ready to go for the simulators to send it in. The function app is in place. It has all the author authorization it should need to write data into digital twins. It should be able to stream the data responding to the events coming in from the telemetry hitting our IoT hub as we ingest it. Whew, that's a lot, but it's pretty cool when it all comes together. Uh, okay, so that's a neat, that's a neat uh, thing that's happening there. Uh, let's go back to the function app anyway and just assume that's gonna work. And in the function app, and I really don't like how they've made this so like you don't get the full page anymore. Um, I need to figure out how to disable that. <laughs> Once you're on your function app, go to your logs and find your log stream. This is gonna be critical because without watching it, you won't know where you're getting errors or if you're even getting the data. So our stream is ready to go. Now the next piece of the puzzle is to run our simulators. And so I'm gonna create, let's just go ahead and make sure, let's see this one, don't need any more. This one's still running our local. Let's go ahead and terminate that job for now and we'll get this one into a simulator. All right, so here's our device simulator. So let's just duplicate this a couple times. We'll then be able to run all three simulators from here. And so we need to CD into the simulator and the trailer simulator two. And this one, 
Let's see, I think we gotta go one level deeper, don't we? A CD device simulator. All right, so that's gonna be number two, and this one will be number three. All right, so we're ready to go. So we're just gonna do .NET run on all three of these. And hopefully we won't get errors on any of them and we'll start seeing some simulator data going in. Got that same weird error on the async thing, but it's still working, so I'm good to go. I'm gonna leave that alone. There's two is going, three is going. All right, so the next piece is to look and see if we're seeing stuff in the streams. And we are, and look at that, no red. This is awesome. So everything's working, so I didn't forget a step. Everything is ready to go, and we're getting data sent to the digital twins. So as we're live ingesting data from our simulator, now we can see what drivers are going into temperature alerts. So right now we have one, and it will just take some time here, but oh, we got lucky, and we see two this time. So we see that that data is being, all, all three of them are in bad state right now. We better get on the phone quick. And hopefully they'll start taking care of themselves here and, and uh, get better. <laughs> yeah, so we see that it is getting live data though. Um, we are getting data implemented in there. The, the temperature alerts are being set. So everything looks good. And it looks like we are wired up and working. So just a quick final recap. We built a number of, of resources in this simulation. We were building out, first of all, we built our IoT Hub and our ADT instance, which we were able to then build our models, get our ADT models loaded, and we were able to simulate this trip of these drivers with their trucks and the trailers with the devices. We ingested data into the Fleet Manager Hub via the IoT simulator, and then we're using the Azure function responding to an event grid event to be able to write data directly back to Fleet Manager. And again, the main pieces of the puzzle, just to kind of summarize one last time, once we created this, we must have the identity on it, and the identity must be also assigned as the data owner on the Digital Twins instance in order to be able to write to it correctly. So along the way, if you saw some errors, uh, what you might see if you had started this and for some reason when you created your digital twins your instances didn't have the actual temperature set on it. Um, I ran into this problem on a trial run. My temperature uh, wasn't set on the sensor to start with and when it wasn't set I started getting a bunch of errors that it wouldn't be able to write to it even though I was sending good data. When this said unset here uh, it was just, it was like it was uh, undefined, like a JavaScript error you know, back in the day. You know, if you try to write, you know, work against something undefined, it just errors out. So if you see something weird like that, double check that your values are all initialized just to make sure that you have data that you aren't trying to write to an unset field from the ingester. Um, other than that, we saw the other gotchas, which could be invalid models or just a couple of other configuration errors around authorization. But with that, that's going to wrap up this demonstration. I sure hope you enjoyed it. I got to tell you, it was a lot deeper than I expected it to be when I first took on the idea of demonstrating this. But it has been a complete blast for me to go through and learn this material. And I hope you enjoyed it as well. Let me know. Reach out to me on Twitter at BL Gorman or connect with me on LinkedIn, Brian L. Gorman. I'd love to talk shop with you, connect, network, whatever you want to do. Let's get to know one another. Let me know what you thought of this. Or if you saw things that I could have done better, I'd also love to hear that. So thanks again for attending this event, the Azure Back to School event that put, put on by my friend Dwayne. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited you watched all this way and good luck with everything. And we'll see you next time.